it comes to selecting PC components, people often spend a lot of time on parts like the CPU and GPU. And smaller components like the power supply often run the risk of becoming a bit of an afterthought. But for such an important component to get right, it makes sense to do a little bit of research and ensure you get the best option for your build. But equally, with so much technical terminology, from form factor to efficiency ratings to modularity to PCIe Gen 5 power cables, how do you know which one is right for your build? And how do you pick apart a good PSU from a bad? Well, in this video, I'm going to tell you all you need to know about picking a power supply for your next build so you can get it right without too much hassle. Let's do this. There is admittedly a lot of terminology to unpick here. So let's start off with the big stuff, but feel free to skip through to any section in the timestamps below you might find particularly interesting. The biggest piece of terminology to understand is wattage. And the question I get all all the time is, James, how many watts do I need for my power supply? A tool like PC Part Picker is a great way to understand the base wattage of a PC build. But PC Part Picker is just that, a base wattage. If you use this as your absolute figure and don't add any headroom, you are going to come into problems. Whether it's the fact that your CPU has a boost behavior that consumes another 50 or 100 watts, or the fact that you've got an auto overclock on your CPU or GPU, which is sipping a bit more power, it's important to have enough headroom. Room for future upgrades is also really nice to have. That's not to say you should go for a thousand watt power supply in a budget build, but keep in mind that if there is a future GPU upgrade you have your eyes on, it might make sense to factor in that extra wattage now. One of the most foolproof ways of getting the right wattage is actually by looking at your GPU's recommended PSU. Head to the NVIDIA, AMD or even Intel website and it will have a recommended wattage for all your favorite graphics cards. Of course if you've got a build with a particularly high-end CPU or a load of extra accessories that are all going to consume power, add a bit more headroom, but the GPU figure is always a good one to go off. I talked a little bit about efficiency, and that's the next big thing to unpack with power supplies. You've probably seen on the PSU a little 80 plus symbol. Let me find the box for this Corsair SF1000 AL. And if you look closely, you'll see in the corner that it says 80 plus gold. Now, 80 plus are a body that PSU manufacturers send their power supplies to. They then test the power supplies and give them an efficiency rating. These range through from 80 plus white through to bronze, silver, gold, all the way up to the dizzy heights of platinum and titanium. And the idea is that the higher and more elusive the metal, the more efficient the power supply is. 80 plus PSUs rate the power supply's efficiency based on its performance under 20%, 50%, and 100% load. The reality of it is that most of the time your system will only be hitting 10% of the power supply's output capability, especially when it's running at idle. But it's when you jump straight into an intense game of Warzone 3 and your CPU and GPU spike to 100% that you need the wattage and the headroom that comes with it. More recently, you'll also find a new body called Cybernetics have come along. They've proved really popular actually in the community for PSU ratings, and they look at things slightly differently. The general idea of the system though is similar, that they have a range of different rating badges that they award PSUs based on their performance. The idea is that both of these bodies are pretty independent, so you can trust them to make sure your power supply has a good rating. More commonly than ever, 80 plus gold is becoming really widespread for a huge array of the latest units, but budget power supplies are always going to be a little bit lower on the spectrum. Something like an 80 plus bronze rating is not uncommon, nor a bad thing for a more entry level PSU. Take this Corsair CX650 as an example. And you might notice other things about this budget Corsair power supply that are different to a far higher end and more expensive unit like Corsair's RM1200X. I should give a massive thanks, by the way, to Corsair for sending out all the PSUs and making in this video possible. Now this power supply has all of its cables pre-attached and this is a common trait of a more budget oriented power supply. Now you won't necessarily need to use all these cables, you might not need multiple SATA connections or you might not need cables for three different GPUs but the idea is that you have all the options available to you. And on a slightly more budget end power supply with less wattage and less connections in general, this isn't such a big problem as you can tuck these away in your case. Personally I always prefer a fully modular power supply like this one whereby you get all the connections and all the cables but only only plug in the ones that you need, something which massively helps with cable management. Another really important thing to talk about with PSUs is size. And like everything in life, it matters. Now you'll notice that this power supply is considerably smaller than this power supply, yet they're both a thousand watts. Now, this power supply runs on what we call the SFX form factor. There are two main form factors with power supplies, ATX and SFX. SFX, standing for small form factor, is often used in much smaller cases where you're trying to build a much smaller system. Now, obviously SFX has trade-offs as cooling becomes a bit more of a challenge, trying to squeeze in just as many connections also becomes quite tricky, but you might see that your case has a requirement for an SFX PSU. If so, you want something like this. It's also worth 
worth noting the length of power supplies, depending on the case you get, even those that support full-size ATX units, there might be a max PSU length, which might make something like this a little bit more difficult to accommodate than something like this, a much smaller RM1000E. But the world of PSU cables and efficiency has got more complicated recently. And you've also probably seen the advent of a PCIe Gem 5 power connector and this word, ATX 3.0. What on earth does it mean? ATX 3.0 is basically a new power supply standard derived by Intel that looks to usher in the next generation of PSUs. Most new PSUs will be ATX3, and on the higher end, it's something you definitely want to look for. They were expensive, but they're getting a lot cheaper and kind of becoming the expected standard in much of the industry nowadays. ATX3 has loads of really complicated PSU jargon and requirements and standards that brands are expected to adhere to. But also you'll find in ATX3 power supplies, the inclusion of this, a PCIe Gem 5 power cable, pretty much as standard. Now, these cables are capable of delivering varying amounts of wattage. I've seen them go as high as like 600 watts on some power supplies. Great for not only cards like the 4090, which consume a fair bit of power, but also good for cards moving into the future. The idea with the PCIe Gem 5 power cable is that it replaces the need to have two, three, or even four six plus two pin GPU power connections. Personally, I'm a big fan of the PCIe Gem 5 power cable. And while AMD haven't adopted it yet, if I'm being honest with Radeon RX 8000 or whatever they end up calling it, it's something that I would expect to become much more mainstream and more common. There are a couple of other key features to note that you might find on some power supply units. Many have what we call a zero RPM mode. This basically takes the fan in the power supply and turns it off when the PSU is at low load or low temperatures, something which helps with the acoustics of your system. Some PSUs also have fully digital software control like this one that integrates with Corsair IQ via an internal USB-C connection. And what that's gonna do is allow you to monitor in your system and optimize to a degree the power of your build and what power consumption is being used at any one time. It's also of course worth reading the reviews of power supplies. It sounds so simple, but there's often nothing better than end user experience and of course the experience of experts and review publications like ourselves linked in the description below to learn exactly which models are and aren't recommended. You'll also see brands like Corsair, who kindly sponsored this video, release cool innovations like this. This is their RMX shift range and you can see here that all the cables are on the side and not on the end. And what it means is that once your PSU is installed into the build, it's still easy to actually install extra cables as you go. This is good for novice builders who might install the PSU first without any of the cables attached and then have to struggle otherwise to get the cables in, or perhaps more commonly and more sensibly for those looking to upgrade an existing system. It's really easy because all you do is find the little 12 pin slot on the end of the power supply and you just slot the cable in nice and easily. It doesn't matter then if this PSU is already installed in the case, the cable is side mounted and easy to access. In fact, rather unsurprisingly, and as you can see from the endless number of power supplies on the table, Corsair also do have a range of PSUs available. And we've genuinely, over the years, had some really great experiences when it comes to Corsair power supplies in a range of our builds. And talking more generally, there's loads of scaremongering that goes on with power supplies. Some of the overcurrent protections are really good. Now, I remember when we had the, I think it was the 3070 in for the first time and weren't sure about the power consumption. And talking quite honestly, ended up running it on a power supply that wasn't sufficient. The PSU didn't fry, the system didn't set on fire and burn, the PSU just cut out and the build turned off before any problems arose. That's not to say you want to buy a power supply that isn't quite good enough, but you'd be remarkably impressed at how low power consumption can really be on lots of the latest systems and components. I'll leave links to the full Corsair range of PSUs down in the description below, and a big thank you to Corsair for helping make this video possible. If you enjoyed it, get subscribed, drop a like, and thanks for watching, and as always, we'll see you in the next one.